Greetings Hobbies, this is Arsans of Vool, and this is the POT3 3D Scanner. Let's take a look. So the POT3 from RevoPoint sits nicely between their Inspire, which is their entry level scanner at the lowest price point they've got, and the Mini, which is one of their more expensive scanners. And it sits pretty fairly in the middle of them, both in terms of price and in terms of precision and accuracy. Now we had a look at the Inspire recently, there's a link to that in the description, and we had a look at the Mini a while back, and the POP3 bears the most similarities to the Inspire, being their more recent scanners. Especially useful is that it's got its internal gizmo, so it can tell which way up it is, which really does seem to help the reliability of the scanning. And in pretty much all regards, it is about twice as detailed as the Inspire. So you are paying more, at the time of recording this, it's about $140 more than the Inspire, but you do get a lot more bang for your buck, including a color capture camera that has got a larger aperture which should make its recorded textures vastly more accurate and therefore better for things like computer games. And this quality continues to show when you look at well, how it arrives. It comes in this really nice case. None of RevoPoint's other cameras do that and everything is really, really nicely fitted into this case. You've got your standard tripod, which can also act as a handle, which is really useful if you're trying to scan an object which is either fixed in place and you've got to move around it, or if it's got some complex angles to it. Then you've got the camera itself with these three buttons so you can operate it more easily if you're doing it with your mobile device and it just feels a bit more premium quality than the Inspire. Then you've got your standard bit like your turntable and your test model for trying out the scanner. Then neatly folded away on the other side of the case are all of your cables and other things that you need so they don't get in the way and each of them bagged up separately. Finally, you've got these really useful elastic bits. So say for example, you do have the mobile scanning battery so you can use your mobile. That will fit in there nicely and you can keep everything all together in this case. This seems like it's been really well thought through by a group of people that actually plan on going out to use a scanner somewhere out in the world, not just a little tag on. The only bit that feels a little bit odd is the separate place for the statue. Realistically, once you've used that once to test it out, I don't think I've ever used one of these again, so I don't really know why it has its own space. But I'm sure there's other alternative uses for this gap, you'll just need to be a little inventive. So let's have a look and see how this scans, and bearing in mind it is coming up to Halloween at the time of recording this, I thought we'd go with something a little Halloween themed. Now I can't say that this is my best carving attempt, but Peter the Pumpkin seemed like a pretty good place to start with scanning something. It's got a relatively rough surface with a lot of little dimples that can see if it's going to pick up that detailing. But importantly, this scanner is meant to be particularly good at capturing images and applying them as a texture to your scan. And to do that, it has a wider aperture that should mean that it's going to capture better and more realistic colours. So an object that's got these little variations in tone seemed like a really sensible place to go. Also, being a hollow sphere with things cut into it actually poses some issues when 3D scanning, so it seems like a nice thing to play around with and have a look at what Blender can do when taking a 3D scan into this sort of environment. Because normally having these large holes with a dark inside so that you can't scan it correctly can cause a really big problem for 3D scanners. So this is a nice test of both the scanner and RevoPoint software, which has always been a pretty pleasant experience to use. One of my favourite things about it being that on the right hand side you get this really useful display that shows if you're at the right sort of distance from the object you're trying to scan. And combined with the internal sensors that tell this scanner which way up it is, I've found this makes for a really, really reliable scan outcome. At this point in the background, I'm just going to go through the standard processing, but I'm leaving it in just in case anyone's interested in what I'm doing. So checking out the POP3 in comparison to the Inspire. Now, firstly, I would say when the Inspire was on Kickstarter, it was pretty much a no brainer. You'd go for the Inspire. It was just so cheap. Why wouldn't you? But now it's probably a much harder question to decide which one to do. As I said earlier, it's about $140 more, and for that you're getting double the scan accuracy, double the resolution, and it can scan smaller objects. Add that in with a nice carry case. I don't know how much the carry case means to you, but for me I was kind of surprised at how impressed I was with it. And then add the better color accuracy on top of that, and you've got yourself a bit of a competition of which one to go for. In the end, I think it's just going to come down to your personal preference and use. But it's great that RevoPoint have such a range of different scanners available, so you can pick the one that most meets your needs and price point. So with the processing done, let's bring this into Blender and see how Peter the Pumpkin looks. 
So I'll just speed through the boring bit of bringing this in, but you can see it's, as always with RevoPoint scanners, a really good scan. Now, we've got this really dense mesh here, which is probably way denser than we need, but we'll fiddle around with that in a second. Also, I should say that normally RevoPoint scanners and its software is very, very good at having the texture already there, unless you're an idiot like I am, and then you change the name of the file halfway through, and then you just need to reselect it. So again, very, very easy to do there. And you can see a slightly odd texture in the center of the eyes. That's because I selected to fill the holes because I wanted a complete manifold mesh for a trick I'm gonna do later. So now I'm just gonna fill around with the amount of vertices there are, and in Blender we can use a decimate model for that really quickly, and then we can triangulate it. So if you were to use this in a computer game, this would be the way to set it up so it doesn't take up too much space or computing power. And as you can see, this gives us a really nice overall triangulated mesh. And importantly, as was advertised, the color on this is absolutely fantastic. The tones are really realistic without being washed out, which is often a problem that you find in 3D scans. I would also say that the scanner has a set of LED lights, which you can also set on when you scan, which will then give you a much brighter color and allow it to work in darker environments, which not all scanners have, and it really is a blessing to have that if you wanted something that looked a bit more vivid and almost slightly surreal and cartoony, or you're working in quite a dark situation, which can be the case if you're scanning something that you can't move into better lighting. Now, what I've been doing in the background while this is going on is setting up a trick you can do in Blender where I'm going to holler out the center of this object. Now, I said at the beginning that a pumpkin would actually be something quite tricky to scan. And the reason for that is scanners are very unlikely to be able to scan the center of hollow objects. You'll notice that if you watch people scanning on advertising or even a lot of YouTube channels and things like that, that people rarely scan objects like this. And I really wanted to put this scanner and the software through its paces. And the ability of the RevoPoint software to be able to fill in holes as well as it does makes this really easy to do. And you can see it gives a nice effect where you can see into or through the pumpkin. And again, because of how clean the mesh is, this makes it really easy to do any final cleanup in Blender. You can very quickly look for minor scanning errors. This is actually little bits were there because I wasn't very clean in the way I carved it and then cleaned it afterwards. And also some minor scanning errors because, well, you move your arm as you go and you can't hold it perfectly still. And this combination of a very clean mesh with Blender makes it very, very easy to clean up. There's a lot of little tricks that you can do to help yourself out. I'm not sure if that's something people would be interested in. If it is, chuck a comment in the comments section and it's something that I could look at in a future video. So here's our finalized pumpkin from our 3D scan. I'm going to be honest, having used RevoPoint scanners before, I'm not surprised that the scanning process was easy and fairly carefree. The RevoScan 5 software is fantastic, whatever scanner you purchase from them. But I have to say I am very pleasantly surprised with the scan quality, both in terms of the density that's possible and therefore the detail you'll get, and most importantly the color. So if you're looking for a scanner where color accuracy is important to you, the POP3 scanner would be pretty high up on my list of ones to consider. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, give it a like and have a great day.